In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Alleluia. The righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Alleluia. God shall arise. His enemies shall be scattered. And those who hate him shall flee before him. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. It's all before him. The Lord gives the word. The Lord sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Awesome is God from his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Alleluia. The righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Alleluia. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
us pray. O oh God, on this day, warm the soft hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our way by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and more to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the Feast of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of, the, of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in, our, in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel. 
gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid." You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. <coughs> I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Christ. Having heard this Gospel, we confess the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us made, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I reign in a fit a me who mean, I reign in tain a main, ditto me who mean. U kathos ha cosmos, ditto sin ego, ditto me who mean. Pachem relinquo wobis, pachem meam da wobis. Non quo modo mundus dat ego da vobis. Den Frieden lasse ich euch, meinen Frieden gebe ich euch, nicht gebe ich euch, wie die Welt gibt. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Today is the Feast of Pentecost, the day in the church year that we remember the giving of the Holy Spirit 50 days after Easter. Our second reading from Acts chapter 2 gave the historical account of Pentecost. While the disciples were all gathered together in one place, a mighty rushing wind filled the space and tongues of fire rested upon them as they began to preach in various languages. All this happened to fulfill Jesus' word that he would send the Holy Spirit, the Helper. Truth be told, though, there are plenty of misconceptions about the work of the Holy Spirit. Lutherans have often been accused of not having the Spirit because the same old liturgy week after week after week doesn't seem as spiritual, as charismatic, or as genuine as the generation thinks it should be. But... In many ways, it is precisely through the liturgy, through that consistent routine, timeless and perhaps mundane at times, that liturgy that the Spirit does his best work. It is through the liturgy that the Holy Spirit points us back to Christ and his peace week after week, generation after generation. In our gospel reading today from John 14, we heard Jesus say, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Jesus distinguished his peace from the peace of the world. What is the world's peace? Well, the world's peace goes by another name. That name is addiction. While we could talk about common uh, and well-known addictions like alcohol or pornography, there is another addiction that many of you, probably all of you, have already encountered this morning. Our modern world is addicted to screens. TVs, computers, phones, billboards, projectors, they all surround us almost constantly. Ten years ago, people were terrified of the thought of drivers looking down at their phone as they were careening at 65 miles an hour. But today, you cannot buy a new car that doesn't have an even bigger dash screen pulling at your attention away from the road. On your phones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, Rumble, and every other social media platform, tempts you to watch one more video, look at one more comment, or hit subscribe to one more channel. Our phones buzz and chime and ring and tempt you to keep on scrolling to the next video, the next picture, or whatever it may be. And before some of you chime in with self-righteous frustration, screens are as much an issue for the 50-plus crowd as the 20 and under crowd. It's just the truth, because kids learn from their parents. Now, perhaps screens could be helpful, but they also cause countless issues, like decreasing attention spans, decreasing retention skills, increasing loneliness, and non-existent relationships between families and friends. Now, this is just one example of the world's peace. The world offers peace by addiction to what is easy. The world promises that if you watch just a little bit longer, then you'll have peace. 
It is easy to waste time with screens. As you spend time with screens, you have sweet peace as you escape from your responsibilities. But when you give in to what's easy, when you give in to the addiction, you do not have true peace. You turn off the screen and the world around you doesn't sparkle as brightly as that blue light of your phone. The world's peace is fleeting and temporary and doesn't come through. But what about the important things in life that aren't easy? For example, church. Church is not easy. Taking kids with you to church is even less easy. Teaching your kids the faith is difficult. Wrangling, wriggling kids in the pews and keeping them focused on what's happening longer than the span of a TikTok video would make any parent nervous. But what's more important than your child's eternal salvation? Isn't his, eternal, his or her eternal life more important than momentary discomfort? Of course it is. Now here's the thing. Children need to see parents struggle. Kids need to see their parents need Jesus, especially on the hard days. Kids need dad and mom to step up and show where to find the true and lasting and abiding peace because they won't find this peace on their phones or on their screens. Now on Pentecost today, it'd be easy to talk about the evangelism that has to happen far away in Africa. But the most fundamental and important evangelism happens between parents and children. So bring your kids to church. Jesus gives his peace here in church. His peace is different from the world's peace. And God gives peace as he saves his people from slavery and from sin. Today is Pentecost. We heard from Acts 2 of another Pentecost, but that even was not the first Pentecost. Pentecost is the Greek word for 50th. But in the Old Testament, the festival was called something else. It was called the Feast of Weeks. It was the festival that commemorated the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. God had delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. He had led them through the Red Sea and delivered them from Pharaoh and all his armies. And God brought them to Mount Sinai and gave them the Ten Commandments, just like you've learned in Catechism. All of this took about 50 days. So the Feast of Weeks was the opportunity for one generation to tell the next about that salvation. This happened generation to generation so that even the Jews of the New Testament continued to observe the Feast of Weeks. In fact, that's why there was such a large crowd in Jerusalem in our reading from Acts 2. Faithful Jews from all around the Mediterranean Sea had traveled to Jerusalem to remember God's salvation and the giving of the law at Sinai. But even more, many of them had likely been there for several weeks since Passover. When travel was so difficult and dangerous, many opted to extend their uh, stay so that they could incorporate both holidays, Passover on one end and Pentecost on the other. So because of their long visit, these pilgrims had likely witnessed God's salvation one more time, just like their forefathers in Egypt. But instead of salvation from slavery in Egypt, these people witnessed salvation from slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Instead of a lamb's blood painted across the doorway, there was the Lamb of God's blood on the cross. Instead of the giving of the law, now these people witness the giving of the gospel. And so at the Pentecost of Acts chapter 2, people from all around the world received the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Passover Lamb of God who was sacrificed for sin, who rested in the tomb 
and who rose again from the grave. Now the work of the Holy Spirit is quite simple. It is preaching this one message. The Holy Spirit proclaims the gospel again and again and again and again. He never does anything different or new. Instead, the Holy Spirit, who caused the scriptures to be written, constantly points people back to those holy words. In fact, the Holy Spirit never, never works apart from that word to create or sustain faith. He doesn't want to. It's all right there already. So why on earth would he want to use other means when he has it right there in black and white on the paper. So the Holy Spirit gives peace through this word. And why do we have peace? Because when you read the Bible, you don't have to doubt whether or not God is speaking. Unlike the peace of the world that promises satisfaction with the next thing, God's peace is written on every page of the scriptures. The Spirit gives peace through God's Word. But the Spirit also gives peace through the liturgy. Like I said earlier, many will criticize liturgical churches like this one for not being spiritual enough. But the liturgy takes Scripture and places it into your mouth week after week. Every single week we sing Scripture. We sit with the blind man at Jericho in Mark 10 as we pray, Lord, have mercy. We sing with the angels of Christmas, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. We hear St. Peter from John 6, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. <coughs> We sing heavenly hymns with the cherubim and seraphim, like Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth from Isaiah chapter 6. We join with the disciples on Maundy Thursday as Jesus took bread and wine. He blessed it and broke it and gave it, saying, Take, eat, take, drink. This is my body and my blood. We hear Simeon's cry of joy, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace after we ourselves have received Jesus into our uh, mouths in the supper. And finally, we stand with the ancient Israelites as Aaron lifted up his hands and said, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. So don't you see this wonderful thing? In the liturgy, the Holy Spirit teaches the entire scripture every single week. And if that weren't enough, the Holy Spirit uses the liturgy to give stability and routine. People crave routine in their daily lives, even if it's just when you get your cup of coffee. In a world with new sins, new technologies, and new crises with every new story, the liturgy provides a timeless dependability. When you step into church, you step out of the world, and you hear the promise of heaven and peace forevermore. Now finally, the Holy Spirit uses the liturgy to bring peace between Christians of different languages. I've had the joy of going to church in both Jerusalem as well as Berlin. In both of those locations, the primary language, language was not English. I could not understand the readings or the sermon, but the liturgy still proclaimed the gospel. It proclaimed it in a word, that, in a language that I could understand. The Spirit unites Christians of various languages in the liturgy. That is, the gospel is proclaimed week after week in English and German, Spanish and Swahili, Mandarin, Italian, and every other language through the liturgy. Isn't that a beautiful fulfillment of Pentecost? Though Christians are separated by geography and culture and language, the liturgy serves as the Spirit's language. It is the way that he gives peace. Now at the heart and the center of 
that liturgy is Jesus. In the liturgy, the Spirit puts Scripture into your mouths and into your hearts to sing and to know. But the high point of every week is when the Spirit puts that gospel into your mouth to eat and to drink. Now, right before the distribution, we hear Jesus speak to us, just like he spoke to the disciples at Easter, as he said, peace be with you. And so in the supper and Fritz for the first time today, you will taste and see that God keeps his promises. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, right here today in the Lord's Supper. Amen. Now may this peace that passes all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the anthem. Stand right here. If you so desire, you may follow the rite of confirmation found in the hymnal on page 272. Page 272. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized, Fritz, and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men... I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your heart, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. 
do you confess the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to kneel. Frederick Lewis Meyer. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. From the gospel reading this morning. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I invite all the congregation to stand as we pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing this, your Son, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling him both with heart to believe and with his mouth to confess Christ's saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, he may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Congratulations. You may be seated as we bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord and as we sing the offertory.
Let us stand as we pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, bless the preaching of your word throughout the world. May your spirit create faith in the hearts of the nations that on the great and magnificent day of the Lord they may call on the name of your Son and be saved. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully and many more may be called to the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, sanctified and kept in the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel, bless our nation, and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to you from whom these gifts come. Lord, in your mercy, light of this dark world, you have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people. According to your will, bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick, uplift the depressed, provide for the poor, uphold the forgotten, and answer the prayers of all who call out to you for aid. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, clear away all distractions, that our hearts and minds may be focused on you. As Christ comes to us in the bread, which is his body, and the cup of his blood, help us to receive your gifts with faith and to live from them. Receive our praise and thanksgiving together with the tithes and offerings that we bring, as tokens of our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we thank you for hearing the prayers of your people and granting a shepherd, Pastor Welmer, to guide Trinity in the path of righteousness. Help the saints here to await with joy his arrival. Protect him and his family in the coming days. Bless his ministry among us and grant that we may be ever willing to hear the voice of your servants speaking in your name so that he may joyfully carry out his ministry to your glory and our welfare. Through Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, give to those who weep the joy of your presence, to those who grieve the hope of resurrection, and to those who are alone or afraid the consolation of your spirit, that they may not despair but know the joy of your presence and the love of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Holy Spirit, 
on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. peace of the Lord be with you always.
This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. The Almighty and merciful Lord bless you and keep you. Take eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take eat. This is the true body of Christ. Thank you. 
us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I have just one quick announcement. Starting June 11th, so in two weeks, the uh, time for Sunday school and church will change back to what they were before the vacancy. So Sunday school will begin at 9 and church will begin at 10. Again, that begins starting June 11th. We close with our final hymn.